In 2008, adventurer Mark Beaumont smashed the world record, cycling around the globe in just 194 days. Now he's got an even more ambitious dream, to cycle the length of the longest mountain range on Earth, the Rockies and the Andes. This epic 13,000-mile expedition is taking Mark from Alaska to the bottom of Argentina. And not content with that, Mark will attempt something never done before, combining the cycle with climbs of North and South America's highest mountains. It's a nine-month adventure, and this time, South America will push Mark's body and mind beyond anything he's experienced before. From an alien world... This terrain is unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. ...to soul-destroying winds. There's no way I can cycle into that hour on hour. The solitude of the desert. It's unique. It's, it's stunning. Emptiness is, is its charm. And his biggest challenge yet, Mount Aconcagua. Ah, the top's just there. I can see the top. This is the man who cycled the Americas. With 8,000 miles under his belt, Mark's now leaving Central America and is about to begin the final stage in his incredible journey. I guess it's my turn now. With no roads linking Panama to South America, Mark's hitching a lift through the Panama Canal, crossing the equator and getting back on his bike in Ecuador. This is a brilliant way to finish the Central American adventure through the Panama Canal, one of the most unbelievable experiences of my life, just taking a 152-meter boat through those locks. Um, un unbelievable. I'm on a 60-hour voyage now onto the Pacific, and from there, I'll be back into the Andes, big mountain climbing. I've just got a couple of months to get to Aconcagua and start another major climb. of Ecuador, South America. Here we come. Traveling completely alone and filming himself, Mark's back on the road. In sweltering temperatures, he now faces a relentless uphill struggle. These are, without doubt, the toughest roads I've cycled on since Alaska. Miles and miles and miles uphill on dirt. I've been climbing all day, up at uh, about 5,000 feet now, and uh, I'm going incredibly slowly. I'm going little more than walking pace. It's uh, not good miles at all. The big concern is just making my average so I can stay on target to get to Aconcagua. After 10 hours, constantly uphill, <coughs> Mark's at the top of just one of dozens of mountain passes to come. 
I was meant to reach the little village, which is just down ahead, by um, uh, by by lunchtime. But uh, yeah, I didn't realise quite how tough today would be. But climbing to this altitude does have a reward, one that should give Mark's legs a boost. Here they grow the prized Cafe Altura, cultivated above 6,000 feet. This makes the ultimate cup of coffee. After a good night's sleep, however, Mark's caffeine fix is going to be far from instant. It smells amazing. The aroma is, uh, is really strong now. I love coffee. Coffee, uh, coffee's kept me going at many points on this expedition. Very strong coffee. <laughs> it's strong. Si. Sí. Fresco. Fresco. Rico. <laughs> Only after several more cups is Mark ready for the road. This is certainly going to give me lots of power to the pedals today. I, I'm sure this is the equivalent of three or four normal cups of coffee. This stuff is uh, potent. Oh. Salut. <laughs> To fulfill his dream of being the first man to cycle between North and South America's highest mountains, tackling both in a single climbing season, Mark's going to need all the energy he can get. He's got to cycle a daunting 3,000 miles in just seven weeks before seasonal weather could make the second climb impossible. With the enormity of the Andes already slowing him down, there's little room for delays. Uh, I've, uh, I've uh, somehow picked up food poisoning and uh, I've been up pretty much all night. Oh, incredibly ill. <sighs> it's a bit of a blow because uh, there's no way I can ride my bike today. I've got... Uh, I've lost so much time in the mountains uh, this week. But uh, there's no way I can cycle like this. I've not been this ill for years. <sighs> Next day, though, Marks hauled himself back on the bike. <clears throat> I've already been climbing for about an hour and uh, I can't see any sign of the top. These mountains put you in your place when you're at the speed of a bike, which here is incredibly painfully slow. You suddenly realize what you're up against. Stunning. It's absolutely beautiful. But I was in bed sick yesterday, so I don't quite feel I've got the energy to do this. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'll certainly remember Ecuador. It's kind of throwing everything at me. As Mark leaves Ecuador, at least his legs have a brief rest with a monster four and a half thousand foot downhill to the Peruvian border. It's all right, isn't it? And he should relish this brief surge of speed because of what lies ahead. 